Welcome to Divine Femme TV. My name is Sarah Rose and it is an honor and a blessing to be able to to serve the courageous souls that are part of this collective awakening into heart-centered unity consciousness. So that being said, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I would love it if you leave a review and consider joining us over on YouTube at Divine Femme TV, where you can connect, leave comments, and I personally try to respond to as many of those as possible. I wanted to shine a light on the nature of the Twin Flame Catalyst, your divine counterpart, and just take what resonates. If, if this resonates with you, fabulous. If it doesn't, that's fine too. Then it's not meant for you. Maybe it will resonate later. Maybe it won't. I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm here to share authentically and truthfully what has been shown and revealed through my own ascension journey. Okay? The soul is part of duality. It is not the same as spirit. So spirit is the one self, the true self. So call it spirit, call it oneness, call it your true nature. Ultimately, that is the core of your being, your beingness, unconditional love, your God essence. The soul is an individuated stream of consciousness, which is still part of the illusory world of duality. And by the word illusory, I don't mean that it's not real. I mean that the word illusion means it's not as it seems. Just like you appearing as a human body is illusory. This 3D world is illusory. It appears very solid and you appear very separate from the world outside when you look through your eyes. However, that is not the ultimate truth. So it is illusory. It is not as it appears. It is not as it seems. We already know just by science alone that everything is energy and that things aren't truly solid. And so without going down that rabbit hole, the soul is an individuated stream of consciousness just as the human vessel appears to be an individuated experience, which is both true and untrue. It's real and not real simultaneously. Yes, this is a paradox. And the further you go on this journey, the more paradoxes you will encounter. And if this interests you, uh, to dive deeper into this and kind of unravel uh, what's happening on this journey. You can check out the link wherever you're listening to this. I do offer um, what's called Paradox Talks, which is uh, a weekly support group for those on the Twin Flame journey. At least at the time of this recording, it's available. I can't speak for what will be available down the road if you're listening to this a year or two from now who knows but whatever link is available um when you're listening to this is is what's available um so that being said the soul is an innovated an individuated expression of the one self it's still part of duality which is why there's a positive polarity and a negative polarity aka feminine masculine right divine feminine and divine masculine one soul two bodies um so one soul appearing as separate which is both real and unreal we're not discounting the 3d world of form in in some aspect that's all there really is 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 creation right because beingness oneness is really 
no thingness. So I'm not going to say it's nothing, but it is no thing, right? But simultaneously, it's also everything because the substance and essence of infinite consciousness of that which you are is the substance of all creation. So the soul is still rooted in duality and this is where one soul is incarnated in two bodies two apparent bodies which causes a magnetism and a polarity and ultimately if you've met your twin flame then you have been triggered and this is a catalyst for your spiritual ascension it's a blessing and a gift because it, it really is a fast track for your spiritual ascension journey. And if you're just meeting your twin flame and let's say you're, you've are you just gone through a period of separation or you're in it now, then hold on tight because things are going to be shifting. This is a journey. This is something that is going to be unfolding for years to come, Okay. And the ego may not like to hear that because if you're new on the journey and you've just went through like your first set round of separation or whatever, the only thing that your mind is thinking of is when is this person coming back? What are they doing? And you're obsessively thinking. You're, you're in the obsess, obsession of the mind, which is being triggered. It's craziness, right? Like you can't even describe the obsessive thinking to someone because it doesn't even it doesn't even make any sense. You've been through breakups before. You've, you've been through heartache before. Like usually you can move on. This isn't like that because this is not just some karmic or soulmate connection. It's not a soulmate relationship, right? It's not, it's not that. And so many Divine feminines are first treating this as if it is some kind of relationship and that it's some kind of soulmate connection, which couldn't be further from the truth. It's not two individuated souls that are having an exchange in this physical 3D reality, like a soulmate connection or like a karmic soulmate connection. This is one soul having um having an experience in what appears to be two different bodies, which is very different, which is why you have the bizarre synchronicities and the magnetism and the repulsion. The repulsion is at the level of the mind because the mind is rooted in duality. And so you will be repelled at the level of the mind and you are magnetized at the level of the heart because at the level of the heart, your heart, not your physical heart, but your sacred heart, your true essence, the unconditional love that you are, is your portal, which is the bridge between heaven and earth. That is this um, gateway, right? Portal to creation loving itself. You are creation and you are loving you as you move into heart centeredness your true sacred heart you your sacred heart becomes the portal of which you love flows to you through you and lives as you through your sacred heart so it's not the same as your human heart which can be broken and oftentimes the breaking open of the human heart the heart break right just like Rumi has said, the wound is often where the light enters you. So that being said, your twin flame comes in as a catalyst and really triggers your abandonment wound and this uh, void, this inner void, which has been lying dormant your entire life. You may have been aware of it consciously or it's just been driving your decision-making most likely your entire life. This inner void is actually a very natural inner void that 
is consistent with all humans that have agreed to incarnate here on planet Earth in this reality because we agreed on some level to forget who we truly are and believe ourselves to be separate from the God essence within us. And that inner void that is felt on a deep soul core level, because remember the soul is still individuated enough to be quote-unquote separate from the oneness that we truly are and the soul is going on a journey to come home to itself its true self the oneness that you are and that is all things and that is all of creation and so so this inner void that is felt on a deep soul core level is very, it is the root, the root fear that underpins all of humanity. And at a certain, at a certain uh stage of the ascension whether it's this lifetime or another lifetime it doesn't matter like everyone will begin to wake up to this all souls will begin to wake up to and want and and call themselves home it's ultimately the oneness within you calling yourself back home so the, the the game of forgetting your true essence is coming to a close it's coming to an end and it's time to begin to live as the love that you are no longer separate from the divine essence, the God essence, the God within you. And so your twin flame comes in because this is your soul's ascension journey and triggers you and triggers all of this core wounding and triggers at at a deep level your abandonment wounds and this fear of unworthiness and not being lovable and not being safe uh, and this is a blessing in disguise because this fast tracks and really catalyzes your spiritual ascension journey the egoic tendency prior to this point most your entire life has been keeping you living on autopilot in very knee-jerk reactions where the void, this underlying sense of lack, this underlying sense of not being accepted, loved, or worthy in some, to some degree, whether conscious or unconscious, begins to surface. But this has always been there. And what it is, is it's really, like I said, underpins all of humanity. That's, that's separation consciousness This is the root of separation consciousness. And so the longing to come into union is a very healthy, natural longing that we all share. Union is not union with another person. That's separation. Union that your soul is ultimately seeking is union with yourself, your true self, the nature of your being, the unconditional love that you are. So this is ultimately a journey home to your own heart. This is not a journey about coming into union with another person, another apparent person, which is what so many twin flames so many divine feminines will make this out to be when they're initially triggered on this journey but that is just the egoic mind seeking as a band-aid outside of itself in order to fill that perceived void which your twin flame comes in and kind of just rips the band-aid off of this core soul wound this core longing longing for oneness for unity for unconditional love The mind will want to put a band-aid on the void, this apparent void that gets triggered uh, on this journey. And the way it goes about doing that is seeking external things outside of itself with and completely avoiding what is in the shadow what doesn't want to be looked at so this is about really 
alchemizing the shadow and allowing yourself to go to the places that you have never allowed yourself to go to, to be with, with uh, all of it. And so you'll see on this journey that over the course of your life, there's many themes that have been repeating of abandonment or betrayal um, or not being loved or not being accepted and things like that. And also the egoic mind, the little mind's attempt to put a band-aid on that by keeping your focus and your consciousness externalized outside in the world of form. Well, the world of form is just a symbol. The world of form is a symbol that shines back. It's a mirror that reflects back to you how deeply you have met yourself, how deeply you have integrated and met your true self. And so if you're running from your true self, if you're hiding from your true self, if you're afraid to go there, if you're afraid to actually step through the fear and step through and face the void in order to get to the core root of who and what you truly are, which is unconditional love, then life is going to reflect that back to you in the symbols of the world. And one of these symbols in the 3D world is your divine counterpart. So the more you run from yourself, the the more you will see that reflected out into the world. And so the world and the symbols of the world will only be able to meet you to the degree that you have met your true self. And this includes your divine counterpart. So if you are attempting to try to do anything on the mental level regarding this quote-unquote connection, this is not what this journey is about. If you're looking outside in the externalized world of form, trying to make sense of this journey, you will continue to loop in cycles of suffering. If you're trying to attempt this through the level of the mind and conceptual understanding, you are going to be looping in continuous cycles of suffering. If you're trying to treat this as a relationship or a soulmate connection, you will stay looping in, in cycles of suffering. If you are continuously addicted to the storyline and the narrative that keeps you going back and forth between past memories or future projections or keeps you in some narrative or storyline, which is conceptual, then you are going to stay looping in cycles of suffering because this journey is about dropping into the one place that you are one with all that is, including your twin flame, which can only be accessed through the present moment, your divine presence, your your consciousness, your the essence that you are, can only be accessed in the now present moment. And so the addictive thinking of the mind, right? the back and forth that the mind keeps you stuck in, the obsession with future outcomes or expectations or timelines, all of that keeps you looping in cycles of suffering. This journey is about coming home to yourself and turning your consciousness inward and and facing the shadow, which is you know, your feminine shadow, and this is not gender specific, so you can apply everything I've, I've said regarding divine feminine or masculine in any recording that I've, I've done. It's not gender specific. But this is about coming home and, and facing this feminine shadow, which is rooted in powerlessness and unworthiness, and being able to alchemize this at a core level to fully embody in this lifetime your true divine feminine power. So this is not only about coming into union with the love that you are, but also fully actualizing it, embodying it in this 3D reality. The divine feminine 
journey, the path of the divine feminine is about bringing unconditional love into the 3D world manifested form. But this can only be done through your sacred heart, which is the bridge between heaven and earth. It is the great alchemist. It is the portal that allows the creation that you are, that the love that you are to pour to you, through you, and as you, and out into the world as a way shower for this new paradigm as humanity shifts into unity consciousness. So if you would like help on this journey, if you would like support on this journey, if you're finding yourself cycling through, um, you know, suffering, the suffering serves you on this journey and everyone will go through it to the degree that they need to. It's all perfect. So I'm not here to even, you know, stop your suffering. The suffering is a blessing in disguise and it's a very necessary part of the journey. Dark night of the soul is a very necessary part of the journey. And you're able to be reborn and rebirthed through this alchemical process. But there are phases of this journey where a guide and a mentor can be very beneficial to help shine a light on the shadow especially at the beginning. And so if you're finding yourself looping in cycles of suffering, there's several different options at the time of this recording, at least, that you can check out. The link is below or wherever you happen to be listening to this. And if it resonates and you want to explore uh, working together at a deeper level of support, then I welcome you to check those out. I would be beyond blessed and grateful to be part of your journey. So I hope this finds you well, and until next time, namaste.